All right, I'd like to show you all some um, the main components of the chilled water system on the AC on a larger yacht. Um, this is uh, about an 83 foot long yacht and um, it's got a I think, six ton AC system, large chillers and a large AC pump. Um, if you look at this pump right down here, if you look at this pump right down here, that is a saltwater pump. So salt water's coming into that pump from the sea chest in this case, or from the outside the boat. And then it's being pumped through a hose. It's just for fun. And it's going up to this chiller system up in here. And these chillers are using that salt water to take the heat away. And then this secondary pump here the circulation pump. We talked about how the cold water is in a loop. So that is not salt water going through, that is fresh water with light bulb. And that's going in a circle to all the different areas of the boat that need cool water. And you'll see that black insulation on there because that water is only 46 degrees. You have actually see some condensation on there. All those pipes will have condensation. And right now I can feel this chiller is spinning up. So the noise you're hearing here is that AC compressor cooling that water. And then that water can circulate throughout the boat. And then that right there is just a unit here for the air conditioning. So that's on the chill water system as well. So you know that looks a lot like the other unit, but there's cold water going to that unit. But the actual coil system in the van is very similar to the self contained unit that should be there. This gauge up here is showing me the pressure within that closed loop. So that just tells me that I have water in the loop so that I can move the pole from one end of the boat to another. All right, in marine air conditioning, another good diagnostic tool is um, your main power panel. Most power panels will show you how much electricity you're drawing and from what source. And if you know, for example, that when it's hot out and this AC is working normally, if this boat's normally drawing 25 or 30 amps to keep the boat cool, and right now I'm only drawing 4.4 amps, then you know that the compressor and or water pumps are not running. Um, with a very low amp draw, probably the only thing running is maybe the air handler within the room that's circulating some air, but there's nothing creating a cooling effect whether it's a chilled water system or a conventional system. So one of the things I suggest you do is learn what normal is at your electrical panel and the AC is running properly. So that without going downstairs, without having to really troubleshoot things, you can very quickly ascertain whether the unit is trying to run. Um, in this case, I'm only drawing 4.4 amps. I've got my chillers on. Um, I've got my air handler on, but it's pretty cool outside, so it's not trying to run right. Uh, when you reset things and turn them off, if you have a panel where you can't isolate the air conditioning, it just isolates other things, and the air conditioning is part of the big number, then one of the things you can do on a hot day when everything else is normal on the boat, turn off all your air conditioning, look at the panel, in this case I've got zero because I turned it all off, and then when I turn it back on, <coughs> I've turned on my chiller, my AC pump, my saltwater pump, um, and all my air handlers, and now I'm watching this amp draw come up. And I should see that come up to 25 or 30 amps when it's working properly. The uh, air conditioning units have a lot of safety devices built into them. So that if the voltage is not appropriate, they won't run. If they don't have the right amount of cooling water, if they're not seeing cooling water, they won't run. If the loop system in a chilled water system uh, does not have pressure, it won't run. And all of these are designed to protect the compressor to keep it from overheating. All right, now it's been a couple of minutes, and I deliberately left it off for a little while so that uh, I know the chilled water loop would look hot to the compressor, even though it's a fairly cool day. And now my amp meter is reading 30.4. So I watched it go from zero to 4.4, 4, 
and then once the pumps kicked in and once the compressors kicked in I'm up to 30 amps and now it's going back down 24 22 20 18 so what happened there was that compressor kicked on to cool the water it said oh okay the water is actually cooled so I don't need to work right now and I shut back down now that is normal any air conditioner pays attention to the thermostat and the desired setting and just like in your house just because the breaker's on doesn't mean it's going to do it. When the breaker's on, it means it can do it. But when the compressor sees cold air, or sees cold water in this case, um, it will shut off until it sees that it needs to run, just like at home. Okay, so now I'm at a thermostat of this boat with a chilled water system. And I want to show you another diagnostic you can do without going downstairs. If I just touch the panel and I go through this menu, I can see that my chilled water loop is at 46 degrees. So in a chilled water system, you can walk up to any thermostat in the boat and you can see what the chilled water loop is doing. Now if that weren't working, it would be far higher than the room temperature. So in this case it's 74 in the boat. Um, if that chiller was not running, that, um, that loop temperature would probably be between 90 and 105 degrees. So it would be greater than the room because there's work being done with pumps and water being sent around in the loop, but if the compressor's not running, nothing's cooling it. So it just absorbs the heat from the different rooms and absorbs the heat from the motors and stuff running and pumps running, and it just gets hot very quickly. So I should see at least a 20 degree difference between the desired temperature and the loop temperature for the system to perform properly. Now, on a very hot day, this number might creep up from 47 to say, you know, 56 or 58 or something like that because if I'm only running one of the two chillers in this boat, it may not be able to keep it as cold as it is now. But even if this loop temperature were 60 degrees and I'm trying to get it to 74, um, it's going to help a lot. So it needs to be different um, and sometimes there is a threshold that's set in the system. You optimally, you really want to see about a 20 degree difference or more. Um, also from this panel, I can tell other things. I can go in and set my fan speed. Uh, there are other things I can do within each zone. But the chillers themselves in this boat are down in the engine room just making cold water. And that's that cold water. 45 degrees.